Democrats like to present themselves as the party of working Americans. But if that was ever true, it is certainly not true anymore. You don't have to look any further than recent Democrat policy proposals to see how disconnected the Democrat Party is and has become from ordinary Americans. Take the so-called Green New Deal. This proposal, which would require that all U.S. energy production be renewable, could raise electricity bills for families by more than $3,000 per year. $3,000 per year. It's difficult to see how anyone who understands the challenges faced by working families would propose adding $3,000 per year to their electricity bills. When I'm home in South Dakota, I regularly hear from South Dakota's South Dakotan families working hard to make ends meet. I can think of few families in my state or anywhere else for that matter who could easily observe, absorb an additional $3,000 a year in energy costs. With last week's polar vortex or even the average cold winters that we get on the Great Plains, it's frightening to think about how many people would be at risk if it weren't for reliable and affordable energy. Then, of course, there's Democrats' Medicare for All proposal. Well, this sounds like a simple solution. Who doesn't want to increase access to health care? Until, Madam President, you hear the price tag. So-called Medicare for All would cost an estimated $32 trillion over 10 years. $32 trillion. That's equivalent to the entire federal discretionary budget more than two times over. Madam President, Democrats like to present the fiction of free health care. Well, that's precisely what it is. It's fiction. There's just no such thing as a free lunch, and there's certainly no such thing as free health care. Nurses have to be paid. Lab technicians have to be paid. MRI and x-ray technicians have to be paid. The people who cook for patients and keep our hospitals clean have to be paid. Pharmacists have to be paid. Medical supplies have to be purchased. Someone has to pay all those costs. Now, under the senator from Vermont's government-run health care plan, the government would be paying all the health care bills, so the government would pay all those costs. But the government is going to have to get all that money from somewhere. And where is that money going to come from? Well, it's going to come from the American people. And it would need a lot more money from ordinary Americans to cover the cost of Medicare for all. Doubling the amount, the number of individual, or I should say the amount of individual and corporate income tax collected would still not be enough to pay for the mammoth costs of this plan. Make no mistake, this is not a plan that would be paid for solely from the coffers of the rich. The so-called Medicare for all would be paid for on the backs of middle class Americans. Americans would see stratospheric tax hikes to say nothing of the loss of their employer-sponsored health insurance. Under Medicare for All, if you like your health insurance, you will not be able to keep it because Medicare for All would do away with all employer-sponsored insurance. 175 million Americans would lose their health care coverage and be forced into a government-run replacement, a replacement where the government sets the prices and makes the decisions about what gets covered. So you'll still be paying for your health care via new and higher taxes, but the government will have the final say. Well, Madam President, I could go on. I could talk about other Democrat proposals, like a proposal to raise the, the top marginal tax rate to 70 percent, a rate we haven't seen since 1965, which would be a tax hike not only on individuals, but on small and medium-sized businesses as well. Or House Democrats' proposal to substantially increase the corporate tax rate, even though lowering it to make American businesses more competitive globally has helped grow our economy. It's helped keep businesses and jobs in the United States, and it's produced new benefits and opportunities for American workers. Well, suffice it to say that the Democrat agenda is not an agenda for the middle class. It's an agenda crafted by and for elites and far-left special interest groups. It's an agenda for people who don't have to worry about the size of their energy bill or a hike in their taxes. It's not an agenda for working families. Madam President, Republicans know that working families had a tough time in recent years. Years of economic stagnation during the Obama administration left wages essentially flat and jobs and opportunities were few and far between. For too many families, getting ahead has been replaced by getting by. 
Since Republicans took office two years ago, we've made huge progress at turning the economy around. Tax reform has made life better for ordinary Americans. It's put more money in their pockets and their paychecks. It's reduced utility bills. It's expanded the jobs and opportunities available to workers. Today, the economy is growing. Unemployment is low. And wages are rising at the best pace in a decade. But there's still more work to be done, and Republicans are committed to accomplishing that work. We want to expand the benefits of tax reform even further. We want to lower the cost of living. We want to make health care more affordable. We want to help Americans save for their children's education and for their retirement. And we intend to do it all while leaving Americans in charge of their own decisions. We know that Americans are the best judge of what they and their families need and where their money should go. And Republicans are committed to keeping Americans in charge of their own destinies. We've made a lot of progress so far for American families, and we're committed to making a lot more. And we will oppose every attempt by Democrats to advance an agenda that will result in fewer jobs, lower paychecks, and increased burdens for American families.